everybody, it's me, your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete, and this is my series, Nails in the Coffin, where we learned that with great kills, there must also come great nails. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, you can view what Nails in the Coffin is all about in the section down below, because these videos really aren't film reviews. I just break down the on-screen kills in horror movies, and I evaluate how well that victim responded to their attack. I'm making my way through the Child's Play franchise, getting close to the end now, undertaking Curse of Chucky this week. Here's a look at the average nails in a coffin for the first five films in the franchise. I like a little killing now and then. What's wrong with that? As you can see, Child's Play, Child's Play 2, and Seed of Chucky very close to each other with right about 1.8 nails in a coffin. Bride of Chucky the lowest, 1.6. There was a lot of stupid decisions in that movie. And Child's Play 3, the highest with 2.43 nails in a coffin. I think that's going to be definitely tough to beat, though. There wasn't a lot of stupid decisions made in that movie. Real quick before we get started, at the end of last week's video, if you watched it, I was missing my Chucky doll that I always have here. He was missing and so was the heart of Dabala, which I have had hanging up in every single episode of my videos. Well, when I was sitting down to record this episode, he was sitting right there next to me holding his knife and that heart of Dabala. I cannot get it out of his hand. I'm just going to have to leave it there for now and hopefully nothing bad happens. Well, on to the show. Curse of Chucky does star the stunning Fiona Dorf, Brad Dorf's daughter, as Nika Pierce, our main protagonist, for the foreseeable future. Let's all find out how Curse of Chucky fares with my nails in the coffin. I love the gothic setting of this film, because it takes place nearly all in one location, which is the home of the weird child bound Nika Pierce and her mother. They get a special delivery, it's a large box, and it's not too difficult to guess what's in the box. Uh, what's in the box? Of course, they have no clue who it is or who it's from. Nika says Alice, her niece, is going to love it because she plans on giving it to her. However, the mom throws Chucky in the trash, and I don't think that's going to work out well for anybody. Later at night, Nika is woken up by a scream, and when she goes to investigate, she gets downstairs, she knows there's a large puddle of blood, finding her mother dead on the floor. Nika's mom was killed off-screen, and off-screen kills don't get nail ratings because there's nothing for me to evaluate. After the death of their mother, Nika gets a visit from her sister Barb and father Frank. They came to check on Nika. They're worried about her, and along for the visit is Barb's husband Ian, their daughter Alice, and nanny Jill. Nika and Alice are in the kitchen making chili for everybody, and Alice's new friend Chucky is there as well. When the girls go to the table, our wannabe chef Chucky adds a little extra seasoning to one of the bowls of chili. We watch everybody enjoy their dinner not knowing who's eating Chucky's plate until we see Father Frank start to sweat. He's not feeling well and he decides to leave the dinner early, telling everyone he's got an appointment back at the church. We don't have to wait too long to see what happens to the Reverend. He was in a horrific car crash that killed two people. He's pinned in his car by the roof and when the paramedics go to pull the car away, the father's head falls off. This was a hard one for me to rate but I'm going to use a rating I've came up with last year. The Pass. I haven't used this one in a while. It's for one of those kills where the victim was 100% innocent and did nothing wrong, and they had no opportunity to defend themselves. Combined with, if we don't see enough of the kill to make an accurate rating, granted he ate chili, he got sick, we didn't see the accident. Not enough to go on, but I still want to give him a rating since he did survive for a little while after the accident. So, the Padre feels like a definitely a good candidate for the pass rating. Our next victim is Nanny Jill. Chucky sneaks into her room just in time for a hanky-panky cam show with the lover, Barb. She doesn't see him standing next to her until it's too late. She looks over at him and she gets frozen with fear. Chucky kicks over a pail of water that spills into an outlet on the floor. Since Jill's bare feet were on the floor, the water connects with her and electricity and she is electrocuted. Jill sparked her way to receiving one nail in a coffin. You know, I get that people are either going to fight, flight, or freeze when in the face of a scary situation. But all she saw was a doll standing in front of her, you know, sneering back at her. He didn't say much. He really didn't even move. I don't see why Jill didn't jump back, pick up her feet, scream, or do anything for that matter. Even after electricity hit her, I would think, like, reflexes would snap her back, really. Especially the way that she was positioned. You know, freezing happens a lot in horror movies, and it's never a good thing. I understand it's, it might be an intuitive response, but you know, when you freeze and do nothing, that's just a surefire way to only get one nail in the coffin. Jill's secret lover, Barb, is Chucky's next victim. She's up in the attic looking for Alice, thinking she's playing hide-and-seek. But when she looks at Chucky, she notices something, and she peels the plastic back off on his face, 
and we get revealed that it is stitched up Chucky. When she checks on him again, Chucky scares her by biting at her, sending her flying backwards onto the floor. Chucky jumps down and runs at Barb with a knife in his hand. He holds the knife up to her throat, threatening her, and Barb is just frozen. He tells her that Alice is his now, and then Chucky takes a knife and stabs Barb right in the eye, killing her. I'm only going to give Barb one nail in a coffin. Similar to Jill, she froze and did nothing at all. Even after the doll, the moving doll tells her that Alice is his, she does nothing. No preservation to protect her daughter or even herself. She just pretty much just let him stab her in the eye with zero resistance at all. Didn't put her arms up or nothing. Yeah, that's a one nail in the coffin kill all day long. After finding what happened to Barb, Nick is terrified and she makes it to where Ian is sleeping and wakes him up. She tells him that Jill and Bob are dead and Alice is missing. He gets up, goes looking, finding the bodies of Jill and his wife. He gets Nika, carries her downstairs, and puts her back in her wheelchair. Then they get to the garage where Ian leaves Nika there so he can go look for Alice. But before he leaves, Nika warns him to stay the hell away from Chucky. So Chucky then traps Alice in the garage. He starts the car so the room starts to fill with that noxious gas. She's able to grab an axe, break the car window, forcing Chucky to turn the car off. But then he swallows the keys to the car. Ian returns and sees Nika with the axe, now thinking that she's responsible for the death of Jill and Barb. So Nika's trying to explain what happened. Nina doesn't want to listen. She has an attack in her breathing for her breathing due to her condition. She needs an injection under her ribs and she's begging for Ian to help her. But he ignores her pleas for help and she then passes out in her wheelchair. When Nika comes to, she's duct taped to a chair and Ian asks her what she's done with Alice. Nika says nothing. She can prove what happened, and Ian says he can do that as well, and he puts tape over Nika's mouth. He's watching the footage from the nanny cam he had put in Chucky earlier, and once he switches to the live feed, he sees Chucky in the room he's in with Nika. He gets up, but Chucky pushes Nika's wheelchair into him, knocking him down, and Chucky slowly walks over to Ian, who's still dazed from the fall. Before Ian could do anything, Chucky takes an axe and cuts off Ian's jaw, killing him. Ian is only going to get one nail in the coffin, and for the same reason as Jill and Barb. No one did anything to protect themselves. All three of these kills so far was that the person forgot they had arms or had to move. None of them did anything at all to defend themselves. They just screamed, froze, did nothing, tried nothing. If they at least tried something in the face of danger, they could have gotten a little bit more. But when you act like this, you don't do anything at all, you're only going to get one nail in the coffin. Before we get to the final kill in Curse of Chucky, Nika and Chucky have a really fun fight. First, Chucky runs to her with the axe, but she takes a blow to her leg and feels nothing. Nika then takes the axe out of her leg, and she swipes it at Chucky, removing his head. But there's no blood and guts this time, which is very different from Chucky's past injuries. While Nika is bandaging up her leg, Chucky gets up and puts his head back on, so he definitely has some new tricks up his sleeve. He runs over to Nika, grabs a wheelchair, and pushes it down the hallway. He crashes the wheelchair through the banister, and Nika flying down over to the first floor. This all leads to a final standoff between Chucky and Nika, where Nika gets the better of Chucky for a moment and she stabs him in the back. But like before, there's no blood, only stuffing. Just then, a police officer shows up and once he gets inside, he sees the carnage all around and anybody would think Nika was responsible for everything and she's taken away. We next see her in court and we hear that she's going away to a psychiatric hospital for the criminally insane. And on to our final on-screen kill. Officer Stanton, the first officer on the scene at Nika's house, he was there in the courtroom at her sentencing. After the courtroom adjourns, Officer Stanton takes the Chucky doll in the evidence bag into his patrol car. Very reminiscent of the beginning of Bride of Chucky. He calls his contact to set up a drop-off. Then, of course, Tiffany's there in the back seat. She slices his throat open, just like Officer Bailey and Bride of Chucky. And then Tiffany looks in the bag and asks Chucky, who's next? The final set of nails are Officer Stanton's, and I'm going to give him the same rating I gave Officer Bailey. He gets one nail in the coffin. They died in pretty much the exact same manner, with only a few differences, just Tiffany's location. But as you know in this series, I grade law enforcement officers tougher than the regular civilian because their training involves being in life-threatening situations. That's why I grade him harder, and he was a crooked cop selling evidence in a murder trial to a complete stranger. He was doing shady stuff and had no situational awareness at all. This is 100% his fault, and in law enforcement, it's kind of important to have situational awareness. He sucked as a cop and as a person. One nail in the coffin. Let's wrap this film up. Tiffany makes a drop off at the post office, sending Chucky to his next location. That location is Alice's grandmother's house where she's staying. 
She's happy to see Chucky, and as the movie ends, they start to play Hide the Soul. But before the screen cuts to black, we get a quick glimpse of Alice's grandmother with the plastic bag over her head. Again, she was killed off screen. We didn't actually see what happened, so I can't give her grandmother a nail rating. We're not done quite yet. There's an end credit scene, something you don't see too often in horror movies anymore. Tiffany must have made another trip to the post office because Chucky gets to deliver to this guy's home. He brings the package inside, puts the box on the table to go answer the phone. Now when he's on the phone, a knife bursts through the pack and Chucky starts cutting it open. And as the camera pans around, we see a certificate from Kent Military Academy, a picture of Kyle, and a picture of Andy and his mom. And Andy is still being played by Alex Vincent. Chucky sits up from the box with a scowl on his face, and when he turns his head, there's Andy with the shotgun pointed right at him. Chucky can only say Andy as the shotgun is fired point blank at Chucky's head and the screen cuts to black. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all my Nails in a Coffin 4 Curse of Chucky. Here's a summary of all the nails I've awarded. And here's a look at the average nails in a coffin for all the Chucky films I've covered so far. And with Curse of Chucky, only a one nail in the coffin average. There's only four on screen deaths, and I gave everybody one nail in the coffin. Math was pretty easy right there. I'll see you here next week when I cover Cult of Chucky, the another movie that was released. I hate to weed them, Give me the power I beg of you.